Hi. So it's almost impossible to do a five minute wall art workshop. So I thought I'll just share a few tips that helped me over the years to do a wall art. So the most uh, important thing or the most uh, basic rule that I follow is try to limit a uh, drawing which actually depicts a real life instance or a real life object because it is always hard to get the scale the proportion the color really correct and on to the point and because it is on a large wall it is furthermore you know uh, the detailing the shading everything is more visible so if you are a beginner like me you can always start off with a simple abstract concept or the best thing to start off with is a doodle and when I started off with uh, doodling, I always make sure that there is a main doodle or a main element which we can focus on. And there is the background or what we call as the fillers, the shapes that come and that forms the background. So instead of uh, starting off directly on the wall, we all lay down the most simple sketches or the abstract version of what the final picture is going to be. When I started off, I started using a pencil, but over the years, I have found out that pencil usually leaves a mark and even certain paint cannot, you know, uh, really flush that pencil's dark tone. So it is always better to use a light colored chalk to lay out the initial sketches of the drawing. And when you're comfortable and you're good to go, you can start defining it with a more darker chalk. And then later on, we can add colors to it, the background and details to it. And then you can start building your picture with those lines. So here's a simple video on how I did my very simple koya fish pond, which is very, uh, what do you say, which is very popular these days on doodling or on a wall or on digital art. So here's a video that I started off with. As you can see, I've done my very, uh, say a very basic background with almost the same color tones uh, and then started off with detailing on a more darker tone. And my main elements are those four fishes that you can see. I've used a more brighter color and a contrasting color uh, as compared to my background. Now this is done to give a more 3D effect and it also gives you a picture more lifelike. And you can also see a few shades are laid down underneath those main elements. And usually when you start off, you can do the basic sketching and then add colors to it. And detailing is uh, further done after the entire painting is complete. And as usual, I started off with uh, clearly defining my boundary with a uh, paper tape and later on filling in the colors in slide because uh, what I've done is usually it gets very messy as I start painting the paints get splashed over so it's always good to start off with your border lay down some papers and then use colors on top of it especially when you're painting for somebody else it is always good to be clean and crisp with your drawing the best thing that I've noticed is when your painting actually comes from the context. Say it can be few colors that you've picked down or few elements that you took from the context and lay, laid it with your uh, basic sketching. Especially when you're working for a client, say for a cafe, what are those elements that you can see around it? And then build your concept or build your theme around those uh, few elements that you pick or what are the colors that you have used maybe it can be greens it can be tones that you picturize and you take it and it will actually blend with the context that you are putting your picture in when it is scaled in a bigger uh, frame say three feet into three feet it always looks beautiful if it is pleasing to the eye and the best way that you can to take into consideration is uh, keeping a mindful of the context that you're painting in or go wild and break all the rules and make your picture stand out with a very distinct color or a contrasting image that you want to take it now that comes up with uh, more confidence in your drawing skills and your color sense uh, the best uh, 
trick that I use is always using a black liner to detail out my finishing touches. And this has always helped me to erase few mistakes if I've gone a bit out of my line or if I've done a few detailing which is a bit off. It gives me a time to correct those mistakes and it also gives a 3D effect when it's fully black lined. Now this can, not, this can also be done using darker tones. Say if it's a light green image, you can always use darker tones of blue, green or even red to really add those elements in. And as you start uh, going, as the years go by, you will pick up uh, faster techniques or faster skills like how you can use your brushes, what type of brushes that you can use. It is always use, easier to use a flat brush than a thinner a round brush. Now round brushes are always good to detail in but I find it very time consuming. So flat brush is always e easier and it gives you better control of your lining, it gives you better control of your shape. And uh, I guess uh, it's all about discovering your style, discovering your unique sense and uh, best is to always lay down the picture on a piece of paper, get the proportion correct. If it's a bigger, larger rectangular wall, you draw the uh, initial concept on a rectangular piece of paper. See how the proportion is going to be. Lay out some grid work, lay out some back, uh, background fillers that you're going to use and how the element is, what the colors that you're using and then go on to your bigger frame. So those are the best uh, things that has helped me over these years to do my wall art. I hope you have a good, really great time building your picture and uh, for the, you know, a very short uh, time that we have, uh, here's the best, or what do you say, the best technique that I've used. So go for your background, as I've said, then lay down your initial sketch or the back or the uh, basic sketch of your main element. Add in few details, bring in your main focus, keep layering it with more detailing with darker tones, lighter tones, keep sketching until it starts really giving out that light. And don't forget to add in those shades and small few details to really bring out your image. So thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Kat. Hope to see you all soon. Bye.